No, uh, forgive me, but you seem so tiny compared to Shaq. I mean, yes, <laughs> it's uh, it's my great burden to be this. So, small. for those who don't know, because I don't think people know entirely what you're up to, you wrote and correct me if I get any of this wrong. You wrote all ten episodes of the first season of Fargo. You wrote like six out of the ten episodes of the second season. Yeah. You wrote a bunch of the episodes for Legion. In the me in the middle of all this, you wrote a novel that became a bestseller. And now you're, uh, well, it really, like, uh, just by sitting here tonight, I think we're, you're m losing two or three episodes of yeah. work. Yeah, it's like how Bill Gates loses money by stopping to pick up $10,000. <laughs> if I stop moving, I, I, I'm in trouble. You must be the fastest typist in the world. I mean, just... With two fingers. I literally type... Is, like, that, is yeah. that true? Yeah, or? well, sometimes another finger will get involved, but, you could... but mostly it's just the two. Yeah. You could get a whole other series if you could just learn to type exactly. properly. Exactly, the pinkies would get me, yeah. It, it really is remarkable. And these shows, you know, I mentioned this to you that I love both of these shows. I, I, you, Thank you. You really have, you've taken on, well, for those who don't know, Fargo was this great movie the Coen brothers made. It's one of the most beloved movies of all time. It is, Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And I assume by you as well. Yes. And then you decide to make a television series out of it. And not only didn't you ruin it, you made something entirely different and great on its own. And then you dive into Marvel Comics, which is another kind of iconic, uh, holy relic that yeah. people shouldn't mess with. And you made this great television show out of that. Is that, I mean, were you at all nervous about touching either of these two things just yeah, to I start mean, with? With Fargo, I assumed two people would watch it and one would be hate watching it. And, and you know, when it turned out to be popular and, and critically acclaimed, I mean, I, I just assumed that, that I was doing this thing that, that was such a terrible idea um, that the, the only thing I could do was to just sort of dive into it and make it the thing that it had to be. And then when we were rewarded for taking risks, then when we, I reinvented it for the second year, I just took more risks, and then Legion was sort of the same. I mean, you, you know, you take this underlying material, which is so beautiful and brilliant, and, and you know, I just tried to pay respect to it, but then to do to tell the story that I want to tell with it. So. In a way, it reminds me of how, like, um, Dr. Dre or Jay-Z will take a song or a beat or something and then make it into something else. And even if you don't know what that original thing was, you can appreciate it. Yeah, I think it's a conversation that I'm having with the work that I love, right? Even as a novelist, you're, you're always going off of the books that inspired you, and it becomes a dialogue in a way. And, and you know, no one had ever asked me to make a Coen Brothers movie before, and, and uh, you know, this is my way of showing my appreciation to the work that they do, and, and you know, so, so I look at it that way. It's, it's about trying to find something unfamiliar and, and unexpected in something that we all know. So many of your shows are, uh, are, both of your shows have so much in the way of visual, these elements that I wonder how they even make it to the page, and the music as well. Like, is that something that you're thinking of when you're writing, or is that something that you deal with later on? No, I start talking about music with the, the composer, Jeff Russo, uh, like at the outline stage. With Legion, before there was even a script, he and I were, were talking, and I said that it has to sound like Dark Side of the Moon, which is both a, one of the most brilliant albums ever made, but also has this soundscape of mental illness to it, which the show obviously is about a character who, who may have a, a mental illness or may have these powers or both, and so, Jeff, as as a, a uh, you know, as as an enthusiast, went out and he, he tracked down one of the original synthesizers they used on Dark Side of the Moon, and it's in the show. And the and actual, yeah, not just yeah, the yeah. model, but the actual. No, synthesizer. I think the model. Oh, yeah, the model. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't think he could pry it away from uh, the guy <laughs> who had it. But but yeah, so the music is very important to the identity of the show, obviously, and as it is with Fargo as well. Do you ever get when you're writing these? Do, do they overlap at all? Like, is there a day where you're writing both of these shows? There was literally about three months ago, you know, I would write a Legion script one week and a Fargo script the next week, and, and they're completely opposite shows and, and different brains that you have to wear. And, you know, I think you either have the head for it or you, or you don't, really. It's interesting, yeah, because I know most actors, you feel like an actor couldn't do that because actors, if you go visit them on the set or you hear these stories about them, they're, some of them stay in character the whole time, but you're switching back and forth yeah. from these different... Totally yeah, and different then, worlds. you know, the nine other parts of running shows, which is all the, the business side of it and managing the production and, uh, you know, I direct now as well and, and, you know, so there's a lot. When your kids have a book report to write, are you like, just do it? Yeah, just do it. Yeah. Like this, I could write that thing. 
Get it done. There's, yeah. Well, I've already written it for them. <laughs> so um, the third season of Fargo comes out next month. Boy, you really, I yeah. mean, it's unbelievable how much work you do. Yeah, I, I like to, to multitask, but it's getting a little ridiculous. Yeah, it is you're, getting you're ridiculous. You're actually stressing me out. I'm right sorry, yeah. but it's, I feel like I need to talk some sense into you. It's that, <laughs> yeah, so, and then yeah. I know you're working on another series as well, yeah. based on a Kurt Vonnegut book, which yeah. is another thing that people will kill you if you screw up. But um, I want to ask one question about Fargo. As I know, um, you, you and McGregor is starring in the yes, movie. Yes, playing I mean, two in the roles. Show, in two yeah. different roles. Yeah. Will the now there was a, a an element, and it's, it was very for those who haven't seen the show. It's a great show. For almost it seemed no reason at all a UFO appeared uh -huh. at the end of the. Will that is that something that will continue on in this next season? Well, I always joke that season three would be the space station Fargo, the year 5050, but, but uh, I don't think that we're going to do that, no. But you may see a UFO in the season, but I can't say it'll be a literal UFO. But, mm -hmm. but, but Is that, should we presume when a UFO shows up, it means you've been up too late riding? Yes, it does, yeah. <laughs> too long out in the sun. Well, yeah. if you haven't seen these shows, you can get them on, on FX. They have the app and everything. Watch the whole thing. And the season finale of Legion is next Wednesday night, 10 o'clock on FX. Noah Hawley, everybody. Thank you, Noah. Do you love clicking buttons and subscribing to things? Then click the button to subscribe to my channel, and you'll finally be happy.